Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, Woman Walking Way. Uh, my name is Kathleen. Today we are going to be talking about the pervasive use of abuse imagery in news articles. And this is a very niche topic. So in Canada, there has been, a within the last year, a, um, an expose on the way that police are handling rape cases. And if you're interested in this, I urge you to seek out the Globe and Mail's report, uh, which I can link to, and it's, it's called unfounded, because unfounded is the designation that these cases have been given, and it means that the officer doesn't believe that a crime has been committed. They did a review, and they're going to create a center for women to go to when they're making these reports, and there will be uh, advocates from victim service agencies in the area, which is fantastic. I am very pro that. I want to see how it plays out because it sounds really nice, and when things sound really nice under patriarchy, there's usually something going on beneath the surface. So, in the midst of all of this, there have been so many news articles coming out about this, which is fantastic. It needs to be talked about. It's a huge issue. It stops women from coming forward to the police. It stops uh, men from thinking that there's anything keeping them from raping women, so it's doubly vulnerable for women. Um, so articles are great, but this issue is about the images that journalists use, or editors use, whoever's behind the scenes is deciding what image goes with these articles. And I know you've seen them. If you've ever read a news article, if you've ever scrolled through your feeds, um, they're, they're repetitious. I've seen the same images used over and over. They're pictures of women with their hands over their face. Okay, there's pictures of women with streaks of tears and mascara running down her face. There's images where the woman's face isn't even in the picture, but it's her, her hands and she's being grabbed by very distinctly male hands. Um, images where she's bound, where she's sitting, she's huddling in a corner crying, she's got her hands up to cover her face. Like These are images where we are to understand that the abuse is happening right then in that moment. And I just want to talk about how dehumanizing that is to rape victims. To constantly see yourself as not just a victim, but as someone who is being victimized in that moment every time it brings you right back to your own experiences. And what breaks me is that there's no understanding or respect for how frequently women are victims of rape. So when you post an, an image like that to go with an article, you can pretty much guarantee that rape victims are going to see it. I mean, okay, guaranteed rape victims are going to see it. How many? A lot, right? I see these articles all the time. I share them because the content is important. So I know that there are, out of maybe 400 people that I have on Facebook, however many it gets exposed to, and I have a women-only Facebook page, more than half of them easily are victims of rape or sexual assault or abuse. So how many women who are victims are you exposing this imagery to where it brings you right back to the, to the moment of the abuse, the most traumatic um, experience of it? And, and, I, and I question what the purpose of it is, right? I, I know why it's used. It's infantilizing, right? Like these, these are images of women at their quote unquote weakest points, which gives no um, space for how strong these women actually are in these moments, but it's this culturally enforced image of weakness that we have of women, right? Huddling, cowering, crying, those are all things that we have attached to the idea of weakness. So is that an attempt to elicit sympathy for these women? Or like, um, men will see it and feel protective and therefore something will be done? Is the intent really to try to garner support from men? Is it because images like this are titillating to the male gaze? Like, I know that's true. You only have to look at modern pornography to get that far, right? <clears throat> the images of women being harmed are ubiquitous in our culture and they're inextricably connected with sexualized images. We even have, um, you know, this this thing where we confuse women's cries of pain with women's cries of pleasure. Like you can hear on the TV a woman, you know, making her making high-pitched noises, 
And you might wonder, is that woman being murdered or is that woman having an orgasm in porn, which would not be a real orgasm. So we have a confusion and a conflation with women's pain and women's pleasure. So when, when men see these images, the first thing that comes to their mind is not, this is a strong, powerful woman. This is a woman who can speak for herself. This is a woman who has uh, survived and a woman who has been through something that I'll probably never go through. The thought is, this woman is weak, meek, and broken, and either I need to save her, or I am sexually drawn to that behavior because of the correlation made uh, in porn. These are not the type of people we need looking at these images and advocating for us as victims. What we need to see are images of ourselves, real victims, and my friend commented on something that I wrote about this, and if she's given me permission, then I'll put her blog uh, in the description below, but she made the comment that it's also really alienating to women who have experienced rape but did not cry, cower, um, hold up their hands, uh, any sort of reactions that are, that are repeatedly portrayed in these images. So, you know, maybe she froze, maybe she was intoxicated, maybe she withdrew consent halfway through, things like that. So these are all very natural and normal responses, like the freezing, the shutting down, um, those are natural responses to trauma. So what it does is suggest that there is one way to be a victim, and that's what it looks like, and if you don't do that, then you are not a victim. And this is obviously really negative in two ways. First of all, then you have women questioning, was I really raped if there was no force, if, there, if he didn't grab me and hold me beyond what I could pull away from, if he didn't uh, abuse me or terrorize me or make me cry. Was it really rape? Am I really a victim? Do I even have a right to tell my story? And on the other hand, you have men getting the idea that all victims look like what these images portray, crying, um, cowering, and if she didn't do that, then it must not have been rape. So in two directions, you're harming women, right? You're creating a culture where men think that rape looks very specific, and if they don't recognize it, then it's not rape. So they're going around raping women, uh, and then not thinking it's rape, or not caring. And then you have women questioning their own experiences. So this is obviously really layered, and it's, it's dehumanizing to constantly see a rape victim portrayed in the moment of her abuse, uh, rather than afterward, or maybe even beforehand, before anything like that has happened to her, or after when she's moved through and she's an advocate for other women, or however her life has, has changed, for better or for worse, but to constantly be bombarded with these images of women in the moment of abuse, I have to say like it's so offensive and it's so degrading and it's so harmful and it's harmful to young women too to see this. They need to see women, you know, battling and they need to see women angry. They don't need to see women crying anymore. We have enough women crying in our culture to have that be constantly reinforced by media outlets who only want to uh, get more clicks. So and the clickbait images that are just completely removed from reality and are so exploitative and are offensive and they're lazy. This is what kills me. It is so lazy. It's like they literally Google rape victim and self-fulfilling prophecy, you know, first page is filled with these stock photos of women bawling and mascara streaks and tussled hair and, you know, hiding in a corner with her hands over her face. And then think that that's the best way to connect their writing, which oftentimes is actually about positive movements, like the advocacy center that they're, that they're starting uh, as a result of the unfounded cases here. So do we need that image? Is that helpful? Uh, who is that helping and who is it hurting? So as always, let's look at who is harmed and who benefits. And I think I made a pretty clear case for the fact that women are harmed by this and men benefit from this. 
So let's stop that. Let's reverse that. Let's show, for example, the perpetrators of the crimes. Let's show, you know, a white dude, stock image of rapist. What does that look like? Well, we know that Brock Turner's photo is in the dictionary next to rape now. Let's use his. Let's use his image as the ultimate rape stock photo. Um, let's maybe use the cops photos, right? You don't have to use our local cops if you don't want to. Um, stock image police officers because they are the perpetrators. They're the ones perpetuating the culture where the victimhood and the predation of women can thrive. So maybe they need to have their photos as the headliners in all of these articles. Maybe some attention needs to be drawn to them. Just a thought. Let's put away for good the notion that rape victims always look like fragile, broken, feminine white women. We look like every single woman because we are every single woman. And most of the time that women spend moving through an experience of rape in the aftermath is not spent cowering or crying. It's spent in strength, it's spent in survival, and it's spent in rising up. So let's show that. What are you so afraid of? Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to my channel. I'm having a radical feminist literature giveaway at 500 subscribers, so get me there. Help me reach 500 subscribers. I think that would be awesome. I um, really love seeing you all in the comments. As always, comment please because you're my friends and I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you can also follow me on social media if you so choose. I'm on Twitter as Woman Walks Away and uh, Instagram as Woman Walking Away. And you can check out my website, womanwalkingaway.com. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day surviving.